Hello people, how y'all doing? Well, I hope. This video is directed towards Polster X, plug for ya. Old Leaf, the Globulus, plug for you. Poopy Town Cat, you don't need a plug, you don't make any videos, you just come around leaving comments trying to demonstrate you have some kind of superior intelligence and any other spirit idiot that thinks that you do not need to apply the perspective ramp when you're doing these orthographic views. But before I go on to there, here's Polly down here trying to explain to me why you don't need to use the angular resolution size and whatnot on an orthographic view. And he says it right here. No, the other video I linked above, the one where I conclusively prove that there is no need to compensate for perspective in an orthographic view. This one. Watch it from 8.15 and you will see exactly why you are very wrong. And here's the link. It's a 13-minute video. Yes, I watched it, Paul. And so I responded to him after I watched it. Polster X, you doughhead Paul wasting five of my precious minutes. That video has absolutely nothing to do with angular size and has zero relevance to the point we are talking about. Nor does it have anything to do with perspective. All you demonstrated there was you have to increase the vantage point angle the closer you get to an object and verified it with an orthographic view and that is common sense any three-year-old knows now let's move on to my hard drive here and here is the videos first stop this picture right here now we all know that we're not looking down to see this mountain out here we are looking out the laws of perspective bring everything up in the foreground out here to meet the they all converge up here into the center point of the observers vantage point where he's looking Everything converges to there. Now, without further ado, here, let's let Polly explain. I've created a uh, two scale version of the Earth. If we zoom into the top here, then we'll see some little diagrams. I've done two versions of this. One is on the, uh, the globe Earth, on a curve, and the one at the top is on a flat surface. Okay, now let me just stop you there for a minute, Paul. You will notice, people, that as Paul moves forward through this little segment of video of his, that he is looking down both on the globe projection and the flat projection. So let's look at the globe Earth version first, and this is all drawn exactly to scale. So again, on the left here is Brunswick. The pink line represents our line of sight. So if we scroll across... Let me just stop that right there. Yes, it's all drawn to perfect scale. Although, Paul, you have to apply the angular resolution size as the objects in the distance we all know reduce in their size and converge to the center of the view you'll see that line of sight goes past mount constitution 
goes past Mount Constitution. If you back up there just for a second, you'll see that, that there Mount Constitution would also be above your head because it's in your line of sight. It's above your line of sight, Paul. That's how double dumb super stupid you are. You can't even realize what you're saying. It goes past Mount Airy, just giving the top. And eventually, all the way over here, it lands on Mount Rainier. Around Mount Rainier. It's Mount Rainier, Paul. Mount Rainier. Like the beard. Two thirds of the way up. Bearing in mind that around half of this mountain would be hidden by the curve of the earth. Bearing in mind that half of that mountain, and it's not even half of that mountain, a portion of that mountain would be hidden by the perspective ramp of all of the foreground objects converging to the center of your view. Now if we go up to the flat earth model, we can see how that works on a flat plane. Now hold on a minute. We're going to see how this works on a flat plane. And listen to how super stupid this individual is right here. Sorry to keep telling you that, Paul. But you're looking down. And you're even going to say you're looking down. And you're too ignorant to realize what you're even saying. So again, here is Brunswick. And here is the line of sight. If you were looking from there down at down at we're not looking down at paul we are looking out across there is no down you need the perspective ramp to bring all foreground objects up to the center of your view mount constitution just brushing the top it would also brush the top of mount airy although notice that in the photograph those are two different heights that already doesn't work but further along, that line of sight crashes into the ground. It crashes into the ground. Hey, Paul, you're that double dumb that you realize that it crashes into the ground, yet in the photograph, you can absolutely see Mount Rainier in the background. Beyond the foreground, mountains of Mount Erie and Mount Constitution. And here at about 100 miles out and you can see if I zoom out just how far that is from Rainier which is all see are you that ignorant that you don't realize you would not even see Mount Rainier not Rainier if the perspective ramp was not there the way over here so looking straight past the peaks of those mountains, your line of sight ends there, not. You're not looking straight past the peaks of the mountains. The mountains are climbing the perspective ramp as you look out at Mount Rainier. Over here. Now I can also hear some other flat earthers saying this. See here? He's even, this is super stupid, Paul. You're showing looking down. You're not including the perspective ramp that brings all foreground objects up to the perspective vantage point view. Also, you neglect to reduce the angular size for the object in question being 190 3.9 miles away. That is why you are super stupid, double dumb, Paul. Old Leaf the Globulus. Poopy Town Cat. And every other spear idiot out there that thinks that this has any relevance to do with an orthographic view of what we actually observe. That's all I got to say. Be well, folks, and have a great day.